I have failed once again. Despite aligning myself with the very best, I have once again failed. I, however, am no stranger to failure. But the review did not go so well because on the 28th of June, we were told to get out of here. Has decided to relieve you of your duties as manager of Nottingham Forest with immediate effect. Failure is a part of life. Not just for me, but for everyone. Chelsea have sacked manager Jose Mourinho just seven months after guiding the Blues to the Premier League title. Jose Mourinho has been sacked as manager of Manchester United, uh, the decision made uh, late Monday night. Jose Mourinho has been sacked by Serie A side Roma. I have fallen down many times and I will probably fall a few more. But one thing I never do is stay down. Before getting up once again, some self-introspection was needed for me to analyse where I have been going wrong all these times and to not repeat the same mistakes. Then some humility was required for me to hold myself accountable and to admit that maybe I'm not as good as I think I am or not as good as I once was. The champions of Europe, football club Gerson Kirken, Schalke, Nilfia. With those two steps out of the way, we move on to step three, redesigning. For us to set out a clear path on how we look to come back and to make sure we don't end up in the same position again. For us to plan our next move and how we're going to go about it. We then go into step four, which is rebuilding. This is us putting in the work and trying to get back to the top. Many may say we're finished, but we are nowhere near finished. And if all the previous four steps have been completed successfully, we'll go into step five, which is reclaiming. This is where we will reclaim our spot as one of the best football has to offer. After the long journey back to the top, we shall lift trophies and we shall be successful once again. Now with all that said, I have aligned myself with a man on a similar path. A path of redemption. A path of do or die. A path where failure is not an option this time. As we both look to establish ourselves back at the top of football. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fenerbahce. We're in Istanbul. We're in Turkey, yeah? yeah? Most people come here for hair transplants and to fix their teeth, but we're here for very different reasons. The only thing we'll be looking to adjust is our trajectory. To get back on path to get back on route to success, to rebuild not just the club, not just myself, but the career of Jose Mourinho as well. FC 25 Jose Mourinho career rebuild. Let's get into it. Believe me when I say you are not going to want to miss this and to make sure you don't miss a single video, make sure you're liking the video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, tick the bell notification and get involved in the comments down below. Make your voices heard. I am excited. I'm also a bit nervous. I don't know much about this team. I don't know much about the players and we're just going to quickly go through the squad here and try to get an idea of who will be working with. We just saw a goalkeeper there. He'll definitely not be our starting goalkeeper. This man, however, will be. We have Dominik Levakovic and I do know Dominik Levakovic. Croatia goalkeeper has performed well multiple times in the World Cup, has pulled off some fantastic saves. We can see they're looking at his stats. His kicking isn't great. So, uh, you know, I usually like to do this, especially with teams I don't know much of, to get an idea of how to set up tactically. You know, which kind of uh, tactical vision we're going to go with. Are we going to be a possession-based team? Are we going to be a counter-attacking team? And this is all done because Jose Mourinho usually plays to the strengths of his players. He's a very tactical manager, and that's what we will be doing here today. I like Levent Marcan. I like this guy. Five star weak foot. He's a left back. We can play at center mid and at left mid and I get why. He is well balanced. He's not great in any stat but I think we'll actually be using him more than people may realize. We have Jaden Osdevolda who looks phenomenal. He's a left back. We can play at center back. He is Dutch. Six foot four left back with bags of pace. He has the anticipate play style as well which will be useful. He's physical. He can defend. For a left back his passing isn't great. His dribbling isn't too bad. 
But I think as a left back, he would be a more defensive left back, whereas at centre back, he would really, really excel. We have Alexander Jiku, a Ghanaian centre back, 29 years old, six foot tall, right footed. He is pretty quick as well, also very physical and solid defensively. He will most likely be going straight into the starting 11. He can anticipate and he's good in the air, so I guess he is pretty sick positionally. His passing isn't bad but it isn't great. It isn't great. For us to play like a possession-based style of play, we're gonna need centre-backs who are pretty sick at passing. And Chagal Asoyunchu isn't that either. His passing is not great. His pace is okay. He is more of the aggressive, no-nonsense type of centre-back who is quite physically imposing. So we'll see how we integrate him into the team. We have Rodrigo Bacal, who is quite similar to Suyunchu, he is slower than him, he has a power header, he's good at jockeying and he's a bit of a bruiser, so another very physical. So one thing we're noticing is our centre backs are very physical, they are aerially dominant, but they're probably not the best ball players. So a position based style of play is probably going to be out of the question, especially also thinking that we don't have a ball playing goalkeeper. Okay, we have another centre back there, we have a few players out on loan as well we have some youngsters in the team i mean in terms of age normally you'd think turkish teams are slightly aging you know and i'm sure there are quite a few aging players in the team that may be integrated into the team for right back we have a bright osai samuel who is basically just a pace merchant <laughs> he's incredibly quick he's a right back but he can't really defend he's somewhat physical uh, play styles, we have Jockey, Block, Bruiser, Rapid, and Quick Step. Seems more like a wing back than an actual right back. Seems like he would be better going forward, especially with that pace. He'd be good at getting in behind defenses. What he will do after that, not too sure because his passing and shooting yeah, leave a lot to be desired. But he's incredibly quick, so that will be useful. We then have Mert Muldur. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Listen, I'm going to be butchering so many names, but it's also very exciting. Okay, he's also another right back. He is Turkish. Not as quick as Osai Samuel, but more balanced. You know, he is better defensively. He is also quite tall as well. So he, again, seems like a more defensive option at right back. We have Sofian Amrabat on loan from Fiorentina, who was just at Manchester United last season. He's going to be a very big player for us. Play styles include slide tackle and press proven, which means he can get the ball under pressure and still be, you know, quite solid. His dribbling is okay. His passing is decent as well. So excited to see how we integrate him. We have Ishmael Yuksek as well, another defensive midfielder. He is a bit more mobile than Amrabat. He may be more physical as well. He's six foot tall, jockeying, intercept and slide tackle. Not so great on the ball, nor at dribbling. He seems more like the destroying type of defensive midfielder rather than a playmaker or a ball carrier. So, hmm, something to note there. We don't have another midfielder here, 21 year old. Elmas, long passer. Will he really play all that much? Not too sure, because yeah, the ambitions are going to be quite high from the board, so it's not just going to be some free pass holiday here. We still have to deliver results, and Dushan Tadic will be crucial in us delivering those results. One of our best players in the team here. His passing is phenomenal. His dribbling is good. His shooting is great. He is so, so, so technical, and most of his play styles are of technical qualities, right? And he's going to be good for us. In terms of the wing, we'll see if we'll keep him on the wing because he's not really fast. But maybe he may get a different role as a winger. You know, one that doesn't require him to run in behind. Maybe one that will require him to be more on the ball. We have Philip Kostic who is on loan from Juventus. And this is a very, very good signing and a weapon for us, honestly. Because he is fantastic at crossing. One of the best crosses you will find. A whipped pass play style. And he is quick rapid play style there. His crossing is phenomenal. He's a set-piece threat. 
left back left mid he is more of a wing back once again so it seems like our two fullbacks are more attacking than defensive or at least the two fullbacks that we're thinking of starting are but yeah he's also a big threat from set pieces we have fred in the midfield who is just a machine that just never stops running that's going to be crucial for us as well he's quick his shooting isn't great, of course, we're not going to rely on him to be creative or for him to contribute in terms of goals. But he is relentless. He has a bit of flair on him as well, but he is relentless. He has an engine on him and he's going to be a machine in that midfield that's just going to keep running. And yeah, he's definitely going to be in the team to add some legs in the midfield and yeah, cover a lot of ground. He's quite physical. He's decent defensively as well. So he's going to be a big player for us there. We have uh, Mart Hakan Yandash, another center mid, 29 years old, 5'9". He looks like a decent rotational player or a player that will play sporadically, you know, in terms of injuries and stuff, just to cover here and there. But yeah, nothing we need to shout about. We have Sebastian Szymanski, Polish 25-year-old midfielder who is left-footed quick. Decent shooting, good passing, good dribbling as well. Not really all that defensive, but that is because he's an attacking midfielder. A finesse shot, a dead ball, incisive pass and technical. So definitely an attack-minded midfielder who I think will be crucial in our creativity. Because we've seen Fred, we've seen Amrabat, you know, we've seen most of our midfielders are defensive. We've also seen Yuksek, who's also quite defensive. So Szymanski may have to contribute more on the attacking side of things. We have Borak Kapakak, Turkish 24-year-old right mid. Yeah, probably not going to play all that much. Alan Singh Maximan on loan. Is that Al Ahli? I think it is. Left winger, of course. Skillful, five-star skills. Quick, dribbling, incredible, technical, flair, trickster, quick step. He is the X Factor. He is that player that can make something out of nothing. He is that bit of magic. The guy where a game is a bit tight and he may come up with a cheeky step over or something, you know, creative to really turn things around. He's that bit of a maverick in the team who has something nobody else has. And of course, every team needs that. And he is going to be crucial for us in providing that outlet. We have Ryan Kent, who is an English Winger, five star, weak foot, four star skill moves. Again, very good in terms of uh, the attack. Quick, not great at shooting, not great at passing. He can take man on. If anything, he looks more like a pretty sick impact sub with bags of pace who may stretch defenses. You bring him on against some tired legs. You may have something there or a rotational option. But other than that, I don't think he's going to be fantastic. But he has the potential to make an impact. That's for sure. So we'll see how we integrate him. Maybe he can be like a backup for like a C maximum or something like that, right? We have Irfan Chan Kavechi. Yeah. Look at me. Look at me. Yeah. Getting my Turkish on. Yeah. Turkish right winger, attacking midfielder, and central midfielder. He is 28 years old. He is left footed as well. Pace is decent. Very good shooting, actually. And he actually has a finesse shot playstyle, power shot playstyle as well. Wow. Passing is good. Dribbling is good. I like him. I like him. Will he play on the wing? We'll see. We'll see. Maybe him and Tyrus can fight out on the wing. He can also play in midfield. So that is something to note as well. We have Cengiz Under, who's kind of been around over the last few years. Decent pace, decent shooting, decent passing, decent dribbling. Nothing really stands out in those departments, but... Again, another player who I would feel comfortable bringing in as a sub, who I would feel comfortable bringing in if we have an injury in the first team. And I believe he can contribute. Okay, four-star skills, four-star weak foot. Very good, very good. So he will definitely be part of my plans. We then have, oh, that's a tough one. Okuz Aydan. Okuz Aydan, 23-year-old, right winger, left winger. He is right-footed. He has decent pace and okay dribbling, but he honestly would have to do something special to play regularly. He's not like he's 18. If he was 18 or 19, he'd be a real prospect, but now you're 23, bro. So we'll see, though. We will give him a chance and see what he can do for us. Then we have Edin Zeko, club captain. 
Oh wow, what a man! What a man! One of our better players, also one of our older players. We actually saw that he will be retiring at the end of the season, <laughs> I believe. So it's not gonna be a long time with us having Eden Zeko, but he can definitely contribute. 38 years old. He's a very technical striker, man. Very experienced as well. Five star weak foot clinical finisher. He can contribute more than just goal scoring. He can link up play, aerial threat. Bro, we're excited to see what Eden Zeko can do for us, but he is not the only striker we have. We also have Chenk Tosun. <sighs> when last did you see this guy? I mean, last time I checked, this guy was rotting on the bench of Everton, bro. But hey, here we are. Chenk Tosun is at Fenerbahce. Yeah. Will he play? I doubt. I doubt. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. I doubt. We have Yusuf Ennisiri. This guy has real potential of being a star for us. Our highest valued player on paper, you know, in terms of market value, he has the most and he has the most potential in terms of our attackers. Zeko is a bit old. He's just on the decline. He is only 27 years old. He is a fantastic threat aerially, fantastic jumping, fantastic heading. He can finish. He can finish. But apart from that, I don't think he offers much more. He's not like a super technical guy. He's not like he's amazing at passing or dribbling or anything like that. He does have pace. He does work hard. He could help in pressing and stuff like that. But yeah, we'll see how he contributes to the team. In terms of youth players, we have Safa Tekin, who is a goalkeeper. We have Jaden Collins, who is an Australian goalkeeper with a far throw play style good to see that the goalkeepers have been fixed now following title update three by the way that you're not going to see goalkeepers with eight diving thankfully we have darlington david a six foot seven monster of a nigerian at center back i may as well promote him now bro <laughs> i'm tempted to promote him now we have another darlington this time darlington amos 14 years old, a lot of play styles, but in terms of his actual attributes, not great. We have Ilya Belus, uh, Croatian 14 year old center mid. Yeah, he looks tiny, bruv. Five foot two, left footed, five star skills though. A techie Croatian don. Yeah, we have Orest Velichko. Oh wow, speaking of technical. Four star skills, five star weak foot, another Croatian. What's happening? Did he like flee here? Or I don't, I don't. Akin Ostruk, Turkish. Yeah, five foot eight, right footed. Uh, nah, okay, okay. Burak Aslan, again, another tiny don, another Turkish guy, 14 years old, five foot one. First touch play style as well. So we seem to have quite a lot of technical players in our academy. Now that we've seen all the players at the club, both the senior squad and the youth squad, we have actually set up some tactics that we will be employing. First of all, the tactical preset will be custom, right? We've already mentioned Jose Mourinho sets up his tactics based on the players he has. Of course, we have a few templates we can look back on some of his older tactics and we're actually going to be using one of his older tactics but it is on custom the formation will be 4-1-4-1 very similar to a 4-3-3 we've chose the 4-1-4-1 to be a bit more solid defensively the build-up style will be standard so we'll be mixing it up sometimes we'll keep the ball a bit more sometimes we'll go a bit more direct we will be versatile in our play and then the defensive approach the line will be somewhat high it's up to 65 right it's not high pressing gig and pressing but we're not going to be sitting back either because we're taking into account that we are Fenerbahce right we are one of the top teams in the league so we should be somewhat aggressive now in terms of the roles we have Dominic Levakovic just set on goalkeeper goalkeeper defend not a sweeper keeper he is not great at ball play so his role will just be be a goalkeeper and keep the ball out of the net the two center backs again have very simplistic roles because we saw none of our center backs are really good on the ball we have Jaden Osdevalda who is somewhat decent but we're keeping him on the bench for now we have Jiku and Soyuncu in the starting 11 and they're both set on defender balanced we could set them on defender defend where they would literally just sit back but we have an unbalance for them to sometimes engage the attackers. We have the two 
fullbacks Kostic and Osai Samuel set as attacking wingbacks because we saw they are best at attacking. They're not great at defending, so they're going to be set as attacking wingbacks set on attack on Kostic's side and balanced on Osai Samuel's side. So Kostic will bomb on even further forward because he has that genuine undeniable quality in the final third. Whereas Osai Samuel is somewhat inconsistent, at least we saw from his stats. Sofian Amrabat will be the holding midfielder for now. He will be set on defend. We could set him on roaming where he would cover more ground. You can see the highlighted area there. He would go all the way up to the fullbacks if they're out of position to cover that space. He would literally be like that Makalele at Chelsea. And that's the template we're using. We're using the Chelsea 2005 template. That template of tactics that Jose used and we believe that's the one that will work best for this team. So he's on defend for now, but we could change that. In terms of Fred, he's playing over on the left-hand side and he'll be a deep-lying playmaker set to defend. So he'll be more of the guy responsible for getting us up the field, you know, to pick the ball up. We saw that our centre-backs are not said to be ball players, so Fred will be the one responsible for being the deep line playmaker and to link up the attack with the defence, similarly to what Michael Essien did for Chelsea in that team. We then have Sebastian Szymanski, who will be the playmaker and set to attack, right? Again, we could set him on roaming, he would be more around the field and stuff, but we want him more in that central area for him to really link up with our target man forward, similarly to how Frank Lampard did with Didier Dropper at Chelsea in that team. Our two wingers are set on inside forward and they're set on balanced. So when they're set on balanced, they will still be required to track back. I don't know how well that will work with Dusan Tadic. He doesn't really have that much pace and he doesn't really have that much stamina. But again, we'll try and test this one. In terms of Alan St. Maximan over on the left, inside forward, it's not gonna be a problem. He'll be cutting in on his favorite right foot. Tadic for now will be cutting in on his favorite left foot. And then up top, we have the target forward set to balanced, which will be Edin Zeko starting, which means Yusuf and Nesiri. We said he has the most potential for us, but right now we have him on the bench. Of course, we have the Europa League. We're gonna be making subs. We're gonna be doing all kinds of things. And Zeko is 38, bro. He's not gonna be playing every single game, but for now he's in there. We have options to make him as a wide target forward or you know, for to have him move around a bit or just to be on attack, but we want him on balance so that sometimes he may drop deep to be the target man and link up the play. Now let's look at the rest of the squad and what we have in mind. We actually have Kavechi on the bench right now. He and Szymanski will be rotating a bit. I think they are basically the same player. They are very, very, very similar, at least statistically. Right now we can see there, uh, Kavechi can also play as an attacking midfielder. He's not as quick as Szymanski, but he has better shooting, right? Their passing is the same. Their dribbling is basically the same. Their defending, Kavechi offers more defensively, and the physicality is basically the same. They're both left-footed, three-star skills, three-star weak foot. Bro, they're both five foot nine. You know, like, they are very, very, very similar. And I think they will be rotating in that attacking midfield role within that midfield, see who will contribute more. So we're seeing that Kavechi is better in terms of shooting, but he isn't as quick as Szymanski. Kavechi offers more defensively, but then I'm sure Szymanski will be better at like pressing and covering more ground and stuff. So we'll play around with it a bit, see who contributes more, see who's better coming off the bench and stuff. But yeah, those two are the two I have in mind in terms of rotating. Over on the left, we've already hinted on it, Ryan Kent to be the current understudy for Alan St. Maximan. I don't think this will be really a competition in terms of who starts, but they are somewhat similar. Again, I guess Kent is the most similar player we have to St. Maximan. He's just as quick. You know, in terms of height, they're the same height, they're the same age. You know, of course, Kent isn't as good, but... Yeah, he'll be the understudy right there. We have checked his under, and we're thinking he will be the rotational option over on the right-hand side for Dushan Tadic. Of course, Tadic is superiorly better technically. He's actually even better defensively and physically, which I find quite surprising. The only thing that Unda has on him really is the pace, okay? And 
that's why we have Onda on the bench against more tight players. He's slightly quicker. He'll have more energy and hopefully he can contribute coming on as a sub. In terms of striker, it's obvious. It's Teko or it's Anesiri. Anesiri is quicker. Anesiri is more physical. He is younger. You know, he is probably better aerially as well, but Zeko is better technically. He's better at passing. He's better at linking up play. He's more experienced. He'll be in the right positions at the right times much better, right? So we have Zeko starting. Of course, again, he is the captain, but any series will definitely be playing very, very often. At right back, we have Muldor, and he'll be the understudy to Asai Samuel. He's a bit different, right? He's the only other right back we have, so we don't really have many options here. But he's more defensive, you know. Maybe he may even start some games where we really want to be defensive and we don't want Osai Samuel to get forward that much or we don't want a player that may be a defensive liability. We may place him in there. But Osai Samuel starting for now, of course, is an attacking wing back. I don't think Maldur will be able to do that. So he is on the bench. And then we're looking at Jaden Ostervolta here. I really like this guy. I really like him because he can definitely come in at left back. But if he comes in at left back, he's not going to have the same role Kostic has. If he comes in at left back, he's going to be a defensive left back. He's going to be a guy that we bring in and we're like, hey, we're coming up against one of the big teams and we need a guy that can just lock up defensively. He may be that guy. You know, he can also play on the left hand side at centre back and he would be better at passing than the centre backs we currently do have. We have Bakao as well. He is incredibly physical, incredibly physical. If ever we find ourselves in a situation where we're playing like a back three, he would be very good in that formation. You know, he's not quick. He is the slowest centre back we have. And you saw we're playing a somewhat high line. So that may not be ideal for him. But if the situation where we drop the line deep, we're playing super defensive and we just want a guy that can head away all kinds of crosses that will be coming in, again, he will be ideal. So he is a key part in the squad. And we have Ishmael Yuksik, who just looks like a pit bull, bro. Haven't seen him play, but I get the impression that he is just that guy that runs around everywhere, you know, and can definitely come in and either replace Amrabat right or potentially Fred you know I think he would be a better holding midfielder than Amrabat where it's just like hey it's all about you winning the ball back similar to what Makaleli did but we have Amrabat in there for now Amrabat is on loan Amrabat is the more established player so we'll give him the nod right now but Yuksek will definitely contribute and be involved as well and the last guy I want to highlight here is Merkan the guy with a five star weak foot the guy that can basically be molded into anything you know he's also still quite young and he's currently left back center mid I think he can contribute at left back you know I think he will be a more attacking left back than Ostervolder would be and then in terms of the midfield, he could maybe even play the role Fred plays of the deep lying playmaker, or he can play as an inverted fullback or something like that. He is a player who I like. I currently don't know for sure what his best role would be. And I am open to suggestions. If you guys have suggestions, this is where we interact, right? But I really want to use him. I really want to develop him and I really want to get him involved. So we'll see how we go about that. Now I'm actually going to change up the development here for Kabechi and officially change him to be an attacking midfielder. He is currently down as a right winger, but we said he will be rotating with Szymanski in that attacking midfield role. So we're going to officially develop him to be that attacking midfielder because I think that position really, really could get the best out of him. So we'll see how that goes. It's only going to take two weeks, so it's not going to be that long. In terms of coaches, we have some coaches. We have Semi Kartal, who will be the head attacking coach. Now, in terms of coaches, I only hire one coach per season per department, and I add one every season. We have Noam Golan as the head midfield coach. We have Kem Kurt, or is it Chem Kurt, in defense, and then we have Umit Bolut, who will be handling the goalkeepers there. One coach in the department for now, heading into season two, if we make it to season two, we'll add a new coach in every department. Again, our current budget is 27.6 
1.87 million euros that's after us hiring coaches so i'll just keep you guys posted in terms of how our budget is looking this is where we set up our scouts we have one in turkey we have one in italy we have one in saudi arabia we have one in england and we have one that will be just available for free agents now in terms of buying players i only buy players from those nations we are currently scouting and those are the nations we'll be scouting for this season so if you guys already have like suggestions for players you've seen our squad you see how we want to set up if you have suggestions already drop them down but just bear in mind we'll only be signing players from from those nations in terms of youth scouts this is how the current setup is looking we have a scout in turkey that's looking for defenders so looking for a right back center back left back and defensive midfielder we then have a scout out in egypt looking for wingers hopefully that we get ourselves a little Mohamed Salah yeah we're looking for right mid left mid right winger and left winger and we then have a scout out in Bosnia and Herzegovina exploring one of the new nations added this year he'll be looking for a defensive mid a center mid and an attacking midfielder and following the acquisition of all those youth scouts our budget is now down to 24.89 million euros so yeah we don't have a lot of money and we have some objectives we need to fulfill so let's see what exactly they expect from us domestically they expect us to win the league and to win the cup that's not surprising at all Fenerbahce got incredibly close to winning the league last season losing out by a point I believe to Galatasaray they got like 99 points and still didn't win the league that is crazy the bar is set quite high they also want us to win the Europa League and I think that's a little bit ambitious sure we can compete i believe we can definitely compete in the europa league win it though let's see what we can do youth development they want us to sign one player assigned to a defender position and then long term within two seasons sign one player to the senior team play them in 10 matches either as part of the starting 11 or coming on from the bench so they want us to develop the youth players and actually get them involved in the first team that's also a critical objective so the domestic is critical the youth is critical it doesn't say how much they value the continental success but i'm sure they want that trophy or else they wouldn't ask us to win the trophy in terms of brand exposure get a streak of five clean sheets in home league matches and to sign two young players so they won five clean sheets in a row at home that's going to be difficult that's not going to be easy, but I don't think it's impossible. Financially, within two seasons, increase your club worth by 30% through player sales and competition prize money rewards. The current progress is 0% and we've spent more money than we've actually made already. So that's not going to be easy. At least they've given us two seasons and not one season. We're actually going to run off the episode here just taking a look at some of the youth players. Of course, the youth tournament is a major addition this year and you guys already saw the players we have in the academy and the scouts that we've sent out so i'll keep you guys posted in terms of how the academy is developing which are like the top rising stars you know who to look out for and who will be getting promoted or released as well we have actually gone straight to penalties couldn't get a breakthrough in the one minute of extra time either oh we have a miss there are we gonna round off our first episode here at Fenerbahce with a loss boys oh no we have another miss oh, if they score this it's done and it is done and our youth team has lost to the Allianz Sport youth team in the quarterfinals of the youth tournament on penalties. That's not a great start. That's not a great start. And our goalkeeper was man of the match, Serfa Takin. They uh, wouldn't do too well, did we? Not great. But hey, the kids will learn. We will add... You know, more young bowlers in the academy 
as well. But this is how the first team will be starting the season. We will be taking on Antalya Spor away from home. Listen, I've been trying to learn as much about Turkish football in the past two weeks as possible, right? Leading up to this. So pronouncing the teams, to learn a bit of history, a bit of trivia on the teams we'll be playing as well. I don't know everything, but I'm still very excited. Did you see that, by the way? We're facing Galatasaray in our first home game. Yeah, this is a very tough start to the season. But anyway, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. As always, let me know how excited you are about this. This is it, boys. This is it. This is do or die. Like the video. Subscribe. I think with your crush on. I'll see you guys next time.